Welcome to this first video of our Adobe Animate series. So in this series, we're just going to look at how to use Adobe Animate for drawing. In this first video, I'm just going to show you what Adobe Animate is and basically where everything is kept. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you save your work in an appropriate place. Now, for most of us, this will be in our computing folder. So if you click on this yellow folder icon and then click on this computing folder or go to your documents first and then go into your computing folder from here. And I'd like you to create a doc, a folder called um, Adobe Animate Drawing. Okay. So once you've done that, um, we're good to go. Now for the remainder of this particular video, I'm not gonna use this folder, but this is the folder that I'd like you to use. So my folder is elsewhere because I'm doing these live shows. So where I've put mine is the desktop, this digital student live show, and then inside I've created this Adobe Animate drawing folder. But for you guys, make sure you use the one that we've just created. Once you've done that, we have a place to save all of our work. So we have a completely empty folder to save our work. So now we can head on over to Adobe Animate. So if you click on this icon down the bottom here, this Windows icon, and then you scroll to Adobe Animate, which unless it's your most used icon like mine is here, you can go to the A section and then find Adobe Animate from here. Once you click on that, you'll be faced with this screen. So you always get this, this big kind of welcome, welcome screen. Now, the option that we always use when we're creating new documents is the one that says HTML5 Canvas. So you can click on the HTML5 Canvas and then it will start your project. Now the first thing that I say to my students all the time is make sure you save your work. Adobe Animate is a big program and it's very powerful and if you don't save your work from the very beginning and it crashes, you will lose all of your work. So let's go through the saving process. So we've created the folder ahead of time. So yours in your documents again. So now what I want you to do is save it here and it will be saved as an FLA file. That's important for later on. So we go file. Now I have to just use my scrolling buttons because there's a little bit of an issue with my version of Adobe Animate. So if I just scroll down to where it says save, now, we're going to call this one Lesson 1 Bridge. Now, as you can see from the save as type, it's an Adobe Animate or an Animate document, a .fla. You need to understand that this is a working document. So whenever you want to edit your work, this is what you come back to. You come back to the FLA. Later on, we will be saving our work as different file formats. Okay, so you need to understand that you will have this lesson one bridge dot FLA but you'll also have something something like lesson one bridge dot PNG or something like that so they are completely different files it's the FLA that is your work one it's the FLA that will open if you double click on it, it will open Adobe animate so once you've done that press save now we press save let's go back to the folder to make sure it's saved in the correct place so if you can just check yours is created in your saved in your computer file that'd be great so mine's here and you can see that it's an FLA because it has this big red icon on it and it's very clear that this is a working document for Adobe Animate so the next thing we need to know is what all these panels are starting with this big white one in the middle this is what's called the stage and the stage can be any size and within Adobe Animate you can create documents for pretty much anything you can create them for screen you can create them for print you can create them for devices um, pretty much anything is is capable. <clears throat> Ultimately, Adobe Animate is an animation and an interaction tool, even though in this series we are just going to use it as a drawing tool, and then we're going to move on to the animation a bit later. So the stage, anything that's in white here is the stage, and anything that's in grey is what's called the off stage. So when you're working in animation, you'll use the off stage area to rig up all of your elements, and then you can move them onto the stage as you want to. Um, you can also change the size. So when you've got nothing selected like this, or you click on this gray area, the properties panel, which is all this over here, displays the properties for the actual screen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the width and the height. So if we just change it to something like 700, um, and we'll just change the height to 500, and it doesn't really matter at this point. If you were creating something for television, then you would have a diff completely different size to this. But because it's just a test, we're going to create it this size. And I just pressed enter, and you'll notice that it's got bigger. 
Okay, so we've now got a bigger canvas to work on or a bigger stage to work with. Over on this right hand side, you also have all these other palettes as well. And these are handy little icons to help you kind of make things a lot better um, or a lot quicker. Sorry. The one that we're going to concentrate on mostly is just this properties area. Now, the properties area is context sensitive, so it will change every time you use a different tool. So over on this left hand side are our, is our tool palette. Now I've got my tool palette set up in a very specific way to a very specific work area. And up in this top bit, you see mine says classic. Um, normally when you start off, it will say essentials. Now, if you load it in essentials, yours will look completely different. So you'll have your properties and your tools very close to each other. And that's absolutely fine if you want to work from this. Um, but for the rest of these videos, I'll be working with classic. So if yours doesn't look like the way mine does, make sure you go back to classic and then you can have all the panels set up the way you want to. Um, you can also reset this as well. So if you start losing windows or whatever, you can actually reset this classic here as well. So you can get those windows back if you end up closing windows or moving things around. So now let's have a look. So we've got all these tools and, and in this lesson or in the first drawing lesson, we are going to use a whole bunch of these. So we like to use the arrows and the arrows do different selecting jobs. So the black arrow will allow us to loop select areas and it will allow us to do big jobs or allow us to click on an object and allow us to kind of select it, move it, rotate it, whatever. The white arrow tends to be used for more specific editing. Then you have the free transform tool, which is really cool, where you can actually select something first with the black arrow, then change over to the free transform tool, and you can stretch it, you can resize it, or you can rotate it. Then you have a bunch of drawing tools here. So you have a text tool, a line tool, a rectangle tool, and you can just click on that and you can drag it and you can make the shape that you want. And you'll notice that as we move through this, because I've just created this shape here and it's got blue outline and red inner, the properties has changed. So you've got this blue shape here, which you can change. You've got this red shape here, which you can change as well. You've got this stroke, which you can change. Um, it does need to be selected in order to change that. So in order to select it, you would press the black arrow tool and we'll double click in this particular instance. And then you can make it bigger like this. So with it selected, you can change anything you want. You can change the colors. Um, let's change that to a different color and you can pretty much do whatever you need to do there it's pretty cool you can change the styles and we'll get on to more of that in just a second now the final area that we're going to look at is this timeline and layers so in this area here from where it says one all the way to 140 plus six whatever this is your animation area so when we get to it this is the area that we're going to use to animate now over on this left hand side where it says layer one, these are our layers and you can have infinite layers here um, and we will get onto layers and it does get quite complex when we start building up layers. So these first few drawings, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it just using one layer and then we'll start building up more layers. But in a nutshell, that is Adobe, that is Adobe Animate. Now the next thing I want you to do is just press file and then save one more time. So go down to the save button and then when you press save, um, it will save your work and you're ready to go for the next one. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lesson.